In this video, I'll show you a new and advanced feature of Reify, which allows you to set up a custom position, size and orientation for the root control of the character. There are other things that you can do with this, uh, such as switch the default rotation mode from Quaternions to Euler. And also, according to the Rigify manual, you can set up custom properties before generating the rig, which I don't have any experience with, so we won't talk about it in this video, but do keep it in mind. And also, you could set up two or more root controls, uh, which I'll also try to show in the video. Now, in case it's not obvious, this is an advanced technique, so if you're new to Rigify, please check out my basics playlist. These techniques that I'm going to show only work in Blender 3 and later, so it won't work in Blender 2.93 or earlier. So by default, Rigify generates a root control right in the center of the world. And in most cases, that's exactly what you want. But if you needed to tweak the position of the root control, one thing that you could do is to just tweak it manually in the uh, generated rig. So just select it, go to edit mode, and this will be your root bone. And then you can just move it, even um, you know, rotate it, scale it. And now if you go back to pose mode, this will be the new position of the root bone. And that is fine, just make sure that you do this before you do any animations involving the root bone because that will affect the final animation. And this will also apply to the following techniques that I'm going to show. Um, so this is fine, but the problem with this is of course that we can go back to the meta rig and regenerate the root bone will be back to its default position. So here is a new feature in Blender 3 and later. Uh, you can go to the meta rig, go to edit mode, create a new bone, and just name it root. So you don't have to give it a rig type, um, you don't have to parent anything, you just need a bone that is named root. And now I can regenerate the rig, and you'll see that right away my root control changed. And that is because um, when we create a new bone in Blender, I'm back to the meta rig here in edit mode. Um, so the default bone that um, Blender creates when you press Shift and A is um, pointing upwards, which is not aligned with the world. So if I go to side view and switch to individual origins and press R to rotate and type 90 on my numpad, that will place the bone flat on the ground and it will be oriented with the world. We can verify this by enabling axis and let's move the position over here and uh, enable x-ray and you'll see that this is my world orientation and this is the bone orientation and they match. Um, so now if I regenerate the rig, you'll have more or less the default root um, position. If I go back to the meta rig and just go to edit mode, move this bone and regenerate, you'll see that, you'll see that the root was now generated where the bone is located. If I go back and let's say scale down this bone and regenerate, the root will become smaller. So you can also tweak the size of the root control, which is entirely visual, but it can be useful. Um, and I can even orient this uh, bone differently and that will affect the orientation of the root bone. So let me undo and I'll place it in this uh, more or less default position. So earlier I said that the parenting of this bone is not important, which is mostly true. Uh, there is just one gacha. If I create a new bone and I parent this root bone, the bone that I named root to this bone or to any other bone uh, and try to generate, it will show an error. So because this is the root bone, it shouldn't have a parent because it needs to be the top of the hierarchy. And so having another bone above it, uh, it confuses Rigify. So I'll delete this bone. Actually, I have to undo because this um, generation error created a second meta rig, which happens sometimes. So just undo, delete this bone, and now I can generate. Okay, back to the meta rig. If I go to pose mode and select this bone, you'll see that um, it is in quaternion mode by default, which is the default mode in Blender. Anytime you create a new bone in Blender, it will give it quaternion rotation mode. 
But if I switch this to XYZ Euler, and actually before I generate, uh, let me go to the uh, generated rig, pose mode, and check the generated route, and you'll see that it's in quaternion mode. Okay, back here to the meta rig, I switch to Euler, and now I'm going to generate, go to pose mode, and you'll see that the generated route is also in Euler. There is a video by Royal Skies in which he uses the root bone to animate somersaults and backflips. And for that technique, you need the root to be in Euler. And so someone asked me, how do I do that? So here is how. Speaking of that, uh, here is a little bonus tip. It's not related to the root, but actually if I go to the meta rig and select the arm bone, for example, you'll see that it's in quaternion mode. And again, this is the default mode in Blender. So all of your bones will be in quaternions. There's some exception in this pre-built meta rig, I guess. Like the clavicle are in YXZ Euler, but for the most part, they'll be in quaternions. Um, and if you check your FK controls, you'll see that they are also in quaternion mode. Okay, so if I go back to the meta rig and let's say I change this to XYZ Euler and generate, and then go to pose mode, you'll see that the FK control is now switched to the same Euler mode. But the upper arm, which I didn't change in the metric, is still in quaternions and the, and the hand is also in quaternion. And this will apply to almost all rigify rig types. If you change the rotation type of the meta rig bone, it will be reflected in the FK controls of the generated rig, but not in the IK. So for example, there is no way to change the rotation mode of this IK control from the meta rig. You have to change it here. You could use, um, if we go to the meta rig, under advanced, there is a run script field and you could change anything in the generated rig through this script. And this is something that I'll also cover in the second part of this video. For the remainder of this video, we'll be talking about having two or more root bones. And that is not something that I personally do, but I had requests to cover double root controls. So here we go. Keep in mind that these techniques are not extremely well tested, but I hope to give you some tips to get you started. Here we have the rig already generated. So an easy way to create a second root control is to do it manually. If I select the rig and go to edit mode, this long bone on the ground here is the root bone. Okay, and if I just press Shift D, duplicate it, and then with individual origins, I can make it a little bit bigger and then select the original root bone and then shift select the new root bone and press ctrl p keep offset and also i could rename this bone so i'll press f2 and name it something like root 2 and now if i go to pose mode we'll have this larger bone let's hide the metal rig and so i have this larger control which um, moves the first root with it and then we have the original root there are two problems that you can expect with this approach. The first one is, of course, that if you regenerate the rig, your second root will disappear and you will have to create it again. Another one is that if I select one of these IK widgets, they have a switchable parent, which can be switched to the root, but not to the additional root that we just created. But if you don't need that, then it should be fine. Okay, now let's look at some automated ways to do the same thing. So I'm going to quickly regenerate this rig and my additional root will disappear. And now I'm going to split a new win window here and open a text editor and open a script that I have ready here. And I'm not going to go into details about this script because the next approach that I'm going to show you is actually better than this one. So this one I'm just showing you really quickly. This is basically the exact same manual techniques that we just did a second ago but executed as a script. I can just go to my meta rig, scroll down to rigify and find the advanced settings. And on the run script, I'm going to insert this, this script that I just showed you. And now if I generate the rig, the second root bone will be generated. And I want to say special thanks to Blender Boy. He's a Blender add-on developer. He developed the game rig tools add-on based on CG dive workflows. And he also has a bunch of add-ons 
which were paid, but he just made them free for everyone. You can download them on GitHub. So special thanks to Blender Boy for helping me out with the scripting portion of this video. Most of these uh, scripts here were largely written by him. Now let's move on to the next way to create a double root. So I'm going to go to the meta rig here, disable the script and regenerate so that we have a single root. And then I'll go back to the meta rig, go to edit mode and create a new bone. I'm going to select this bone, press F2 and name it root so that I have the custom root bone that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Now from the side view, I'm going to rotate it and type 90 on the numpad, press Alt R just for a good measure, and that will be my root. And then I'm going to duplicate this bone, scale it up a little bit, press F2 and name it root 2. Now I'm going to go to pose mode, select this new bone, go to the bone tab and give it a rigify type and it's going to be a super copy. And I'm going to disable the form, I just want the control and I can set a widget shape through this menu. Let's make it a diamond and then I'll expand this text editor again and I'll show you my second script which we'll be using for this uh, workflow. So as you can see the script is really simple. Just a couple of lines. So in the first line we grab this uh, reference to the generated rig and this is again something that Blender Boy showed me how to do. Um, so if you go here you have your target rigs. You have to have generated the rig at least once and then these fields here will be populated and then you can get a reference to the generated rig with this command here. Then we go to edit mode because we want to edit the parenting of the bones and that can be done only in edit mode. And then again, we get references to the two root bones. So you have to be careful. The one root bone will always be called root, but the second one is a custom name. So in my case, I named it root underscore two. And so I gave it the same name in this area here. And then the script unparents the second root. This is because when Rigify generates a rig, it automatically parents all unparented bones to the root. So we want to remove that relationship and then we parent the original root to the second root. So now I'm going to enter this script in the field and regenerate. And there we go. I have this diamond, which is the top root and a second root. Okay, I may want to go to the meta rig and just scale down this um, second root bone a little bit, regenerate, and the scale will be reflected here. Okay, so this is nice. We can regenerate this rig as much as we like, and we'll always have the two roots set up. However, um, there is this last problem that the new root is not available as a switchable parent. So I'm going to go to object mode and back to the meta rig, go to pose mode, and let's enable X-Ray. So I want to have the root 2 selected. I'm going to go back to the bone tab and instead of super copy, I'm going to make this into a basic.pivot. I'm going to enable master control and register parent. Do not enable switchable parent. I'm not exactly sure why, but it causes a dependency loop. And also this pivot control we don't need. It's an additional control, but uh, it's not needed in this case. The widget I can leave as a cube or let's make it into a diamond again. And now what I want to do is go to edit mode and let's hide the root bone for a second and select the pelvis bone or the first spine bone and then shift select root two, press control P and choose keep offset. And now if I press Alt H and go to object mode and go out of local mode, I can regenerate the rig. And we have this diamond here acting as a root, but this is not what I meant to show you. Excuse me for a second. Uh, we still have, if I go to object mode, back to the meta rig, uh, we still have this script in here. So it does this parenting of the roots. I don't want to do that for this workflow. I'm going to get rid of this uh, script and regenerate. Now, if I go to pose mode, this will be my top root. And this will kind of act as a root 
except that it doesn't move the legs and arms IK controls. And this is because of the IK parent, it is said to be the root. But because we made this second root bone a pivot type, and we told it to become a switchable parent, now we have the option to parent the IK controls to the second root, to root 2. So I'm going to do that, and um, the number is 2, so you can just enter 2 in here. Okay, and now this will act as a real root. It moves the whole character, and we have also this other root. Okay, so things are almost done. Uh, the only problem that we have right now is that if I regenerate the rig, it will undo these changes that I did to the IK parent. So again, we can use um, this run script option. And until now, I gave you completed scripts, but here I'm going to show you how you can make your own scripts. Um, for some things, it is actually very, very easy. So I'm going to create a new text file here and immediately type import bpy. All Blender scripts have to start with this command. It just imports the Blender Python commands. Next, we go to the generated rig, pose mode, select an IK control, and here for IK parent, I'm going to right click on the number and choose copy full data path. Then just paste it in here and type equals two. So I want to make sure that the second root is the IK parent. And because I know that the number that represents that root is two in here, I can just type equals two and that will switch things for me at generation. So let's go to the other IK control and again, right click here, copy full data path, paste it here, equals two. The leg IK control, right click, copy full data path, paste it, equals two. And finally, the other leg, same thing. Okay. Now let's just go to object mode, go to the meta rig and regenerate. I don't have the run script here. Regenerate, go to pose mode and you'll see that the IK parent is set to one, but I'm going to go to object mode, back to the meta rig. And let's name this script properly. I'm going to name it three underscore set IK parent. Okay, and in here, I'm going to make sure that this script is run when I generate the rig. So regenerate, go to pause mode, check the IK controls, and you'll see that IK parent is set to two. And if I move this control, it acts as a root. So a really quick bonus tip, you can use this same technique of copying the data path to initialize your rig um, as you like. So for example, if you want the arms to be in FK mode, you could select one of the arm controls, go to the IK FK slider, right click, copy full data path, paste it in the script and type equals 1.0. So make sure that you give it the decimal point because otherwise I've seen um, the slider get bugged out. Let's actually try it. I'll just make it equals one and go to the rig and regenerate. Now let's go to pose mode. And you'll see that this slider is kind of set to one and it I can set it to minus 10,000 and some crazy numbers. So let's give it a decimal point here and go back to the meta rig and regenerate. And now it should be fine. So I can only go between zero and one, which is exactly how it works by default. So if I want the other arm to be the same, I can right click here copy full data path equals one. And now every time I generate, my character will start in FK mode for the arms, while the legs are still in IK, as it is by default. So I hope this has been useful. I think we covered a lot of advanced Rigify techniques. If you found this video useful, please click like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in another video.